Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we're talking about a finished object. I don't know which one. So you may have noticed I'm wearing an accessory that I have knitted and that's the object we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> This is a Beloved Bonnet by Tin Can Knits. You've heard me talk about it before. I think this is my third or fourth one. Uh, like sixth if you count all the times I've re-knit. Um, but I didn't have to re-knit this one at all. I think I finally know what I'm doing now. I thought I would let you know that I'm going to layer over my voice lots of different images and scenes of me knitting and different places and adventures that we've been on to keep this super beautiful and engaging while I also talk about the project. So I hope you like that and if you do, comment down below and I'll keep on doing that. If you've heard me talk about my knitting in the past, you know that I have been trying to cultivate a practice where I knit the same pattern over and over and over and over again to really integrate the techniques and get intimate with a pattern so I kind of know more what I'm doing with the thing. I feel like with spinning, you spin a particular technique hundreds of times just because there is a limited number of techniques and so you get very intimate with it every time you spin. But with knitting, I feel like the mechanics of making the stitches is not the part that I struggle with. It's reading the pattern. And we are very tempted to make something once and then move to the next pattern and the next pattern and the next pattern. And to me, that doesn't suit my creative practice. <laughs> so one of the patterns that I love so much that I wanna make it lots of times is this Beloved Bonnet. Before I say what I think it is, uh, you should know in the backstory, I have this interesting sort of um, intersection between adoration for plain and minimalist uh, religious sex, like the Mennonite, the Amish, Hutterite, um, conservative peoples all over the world have a similar feel where they're quite historically minded, timeless, minimalist, where they focus on clean color palettes and traditional patterns that are super high quality heirloom made situations. Um, that has always called to me the handwork as worship, everyday life as worship, infusing your daily practical self with the divine is something that is super important to me. And for a lot of my life, I thought I would have to go towards a very conservative religious group to find that kind of community. Now I'm like a witchy pagan. <laughs> But indigenous and earth-based religious people are often very similar, but choose to focus on different divine sources. So um, you may not think that the Amish and the pagans are extremely similar, but in that perspective, they're super similar. They're cut from the same cloth. I love that this pattern is so reminiscent of traditional head coverings. Again, lots of you know that I spend a lot of the time covering my hair. And this is, it harkens to the caps and it has a very historical, minimalistic, Quaker, religious, all of those adjectives and labels really describe this silhouette well. Except for, let me turn. It's like a gnome. I love that it's like a gnome and it's funky colored. It's got that kind of earth-based pagan hippie thing witchy going on with the little point. It's a fusion of my soul, both aesthetic and spiritual. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm pleased this punch with this hat. <laughs> And I am aware that it is kind of walking the line between dorky and childlike and cool. But that kind of describes, again, most of myself. So anyway, now that I've waxed poetic about my aesthetics and how they are spiritually linked, <laughs> let's talk about the hat. I knit it with my uh, ingle nook fiber, which I guess the circle back to that other thing I was talking about is made by Orthodox nuns. So. There you go. The colors are not usually what I would go for. They are a little lighter. Um, further in the ball, it's darker. Of course, that's what I hit when I was finished with this project. Um, but they will show up on the scarf and the mittens that I plan to make to go with this set. So quite the same as the beans. Um, I'll link that video down below where I talk about 
Perset did learn more about feeling out the different um, weight of yarn and the needles and how that kind of translates. Um, swatching is something that, because I'm so dyslexic, I have trouble visualizing the result of a swatch. So I like these hats because I can kind of try them on and begin to build a feeling like a tactile relationship with the concept of swatching <laughs> and gauge and things like that. So I did go to, I think it was 102 stitches all the way across when it was supposed to be like 72 for the adult size or something. The adult size did not fit um, because I used a lighter weight yarn and I knit tight enough with a small enough needle that it ended up being quite small. So I knit until I felt like it was big enough because I wanted this sort of cap feel. Um, the end hits just a little above where I would want it to. So I probably should have gone to like 115, maybe 120 if I were gonna do it again. Um, and then as well, the stripes are four little ridge bumps at the front and then two where the short rows are. So I thought that was a fun way with the stripes to match it together. Um, there was a lot of end weaving with the stripes, but I feel like by the end of all that weaving, I got a really strong feel for what a good weaving end in situation is like. Again, I feel like I need to experience these things. I decided to block this out with pins. I folded it in half and blocked it uh, around the edges and I found the stripes to be helpful because I put a pen at each of the stripe changes and that allowed me to get a pretty consistent block. And then once the top side was pretty dry, I flipped it over and then dried the bottom side out. And while it was still just, just the tiniest bit damp, I blocked it out on my head. <laughs> I rinsed it with the fiber rinse from Unicorn, which I have links to that down below. I really like that. I love how blocking and doing a fiber rinse makes the project kind of come together. The stitches, you don't necessarily know that they're not quite happy in their spot, but once you block it out, the stitches all snuggle together and get very cozy. Like this is their long-term home. They're not renters, they're owners. They're, this is the place they're gonna chill forever. So I like to watch that almost imperceivable shift it's it's just it's really nice i like that it's one of the many things i like about faber it's those tiny tiny details that you almost wouldn't catch except you have such an intimate relationship with this thing because you've created it from almost nothing so i hope you enjoyed listening to me talk about the beloved bonnet and i hope you enjoyed some of the scenery that went by while i was talking about it if you want to watch the spinning video where this was created i have links to that down below and if you want to see more of my videos hit the subscribe button hit the like button to let me know that you like it if you want to support my family myself and the show financially you can do so by purchasing my books i have a whole series of them that roving blend and card there are links down below in digital and physical you can join the Patreon family where you get like written transcripts, behind the scenes stuff, and voiceover videos for my spinning demos. You can also pick up Spinning Wheel by Spinolution through me if you are in the market. And it is gift giving season, so that would be a great time to be in the market. <laughs> um, I am a dealer, so there's links for that down below as well. And I so much appreciate you coming and sharing this knitting adventure with me. You know that knitting's a little outside my comfort zone. So sharing knitting stuff is particularly special to my heart. A little bit of a, a share, not a vulnerability per se, but just something that's different. You know, I generally come to teach because I am quite experienced, but knitting I'm coming to share as a beginner soul with you. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you for doing that with me, and I will see you next time. Bye!